Monogamish podcast contains content intended for mature audiences. The views expressed here are for entertainment purposes only. Please enjoy the show. Hi, Ishes. I'm Justina. And I'm Kenji. And, and we're, we're Monogamish. monogamish. <laughs> Today. Yep. Oh, man. We met you not, what, like a couple years ago? Yeah, I want to say. Yeah, something like that. Oh, man. Chris Wellman, the comedy genius himself. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Denver's own. So we went to your show a couple weeks ago, Chris, and we were like, we have to have you on. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I know. You are doing such big things with comedy here in town. Oh, yes. that's such a flattering way to refer to my naked show. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you have way Emphasis more Emphasis on big, okay? Big? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> big. <laughs> <laughs> but, you, I mean, way more than that, because now you were telling me, like, you have five different shows, right? Yeah. See? Oh, man, we're going to get into everything today. Heck, yeah. Oh, hell, yeah. Pro and if you want to promote the hell out of anything talk to that camera right there will do hell yeah <laughs> yeah uh so i run five different shows in denver uh they're all queer kinky sex positive shows i run a naked show called bear uh run a slutty storytelling show called the slut down run a gay brunch comedy show called gay brunch um <laughs> it's my least creative name out of all of them <laughs> that and comedy and kink comedy and kink we do a demo on me at the end so comedians are learning how to do bdsm on me with the aid of a dom so that's a lot of fun uh and then of course uh, uh one of my premiere shows like the one that everyone talks about is my rope show mm -hmm. at studio friction called the naughty show yeah oh yes yeah. all right Oh, well, man. Well, let's get into this. Yeah. You know? So, how, how about... Go ahead. So how do you identify Chris? Like, personally? Personally? Confused? Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, clown fair. human would probably be my first identifying word, but... Clown human. Yeah, when it comes to anything lifestyle-related, pansexual, uh, as far as sexuality goes, just open to all genders, and yeah, I'm not picky about who breaks my heart next. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, th and then uh, kink wise, I, I'm definitely a switch. Uh, okay. I'm like okay. both ends of the spectrum. Uh, definitely have a little bit of sadism and masochism in me. So it's okay. fun to play with pain on both ends of the spectrum, I think. And oh, then nice. uh, relationship wise, uh, definitely polyamorous. Uh, and within polyamory, uh, personally identify as relationship anarchists. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Are you in a relationship now? Yeah, I'm in one relationship right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> nice. We've been dating about 10 months, but yeah. Congratulations. Okay. Oh, well, thank you. I know, coming up on that year. Hell right? yeah. Good stuff. Good <laughs> stuff. <laughs> so how did you come about to do comedy? Then? Where did that? Ever since I heard like my first comedy album <laughs> at 13, no, 12, I was instantly hooked because it, it was so confusing how my ADHD brain couldn't sit through a movie, but just the dude with the microphone telling jokes for an hour straight, 90 minutes straight, was the most interesting thing I've ever seen in my life at that point. I was like, how is that better than the millions oh, wow. of dollars they dropped on Transformers? Huh. I oh, wow. Yeah. Do you remember who it was? I mean, the first one that really captured me was Pryor. Oh, um, okay. Really? Yep. Interesting. Yeah, uh, a friend introduced me, uh, had a prior tape, uh, mm -hmm. and then put it on, and we watched it, and I was like, what the hell is this? And then George Carlin, like, a week later. Oh, um, hell yeah. Wow. yeah. Oh, man, he's one of my favorites. Oh, Both yeah. of them are, one of, are some of my favorites, but, yeah, yeah. oh, man, George Carlin is the truth. God. I love <laughs> Carlin. Right? Like, uh, his musicality that he had just for jokes just still to this day blows my mind. Like, right? Talking about, like, uh, you could say you pricked your finger, but you can't say you fingered your prick. Like, <laughs> stuff like that where it's just lyrical. I'm, I'm always envious of that. Oh, that's awesome. Good yeah. stuff. So then you combined the two, and that's what mm -hmm. I love. So so how long have you – would you say that you always your whole life identified pansexual and, and polyamorous and had that sexuality? Yes and no. It took me a long time to kind of figure that out and suss it out for myself. Okay. Uh, my journey was when I was in my teens – with no guidance, no, there was no classes back then. We're talking the early 2000s. Right. But as a 15-year-old started experimenting with ethical non-monogamy, we didn't, we knew we weren't swingers, so we okay. just called ourselves open back then. Uh, okay. And we're kind of just navigating it on our own. I didn't have resources that I could really turn to besides 
online forums for mm-hmm. the most part. Oh, wow. So, yeah. And then thought I was dirty and <laughs> sinful for doing that and tried to leave a, or live a normal life after that. I got married. I was married for almost a decade in a very monogamous hetero relationship oh, with wow. the most really? vanilla person I've ever been in a relationship with. No way. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So I got divorced a month shy of my 10-year anniversary. Uh, okay. And I know it sounds like a bad joke, but I was married to the day nine years and 11 months. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Never forget. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Right? <laughs> oh yeah. my god. And then after that I moved up to Denver and just I was like, all right, uh, uh the brakes are off. No longer going to pretend I'm not this person I am anymore. And oh. so that was 6 years ago now. And so it's been 6 years of being this version of myself and I'm in love with it more and more every day. Oh, okay. that's awesome. Yeah. It's the real you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So do you mind if I ask how old you are? I'm going to be 35 in three weeks. So you were about 30 Mm -hmm. when you finally said, that's it. I'm just going to live how I want to live. Yeah, I figured because I got married at 20. Um, So I spent all my 20s with one person. And I was like, wow, I gave my a decade of my whole life away just trying to chase white picket fences and fit into this. uh, What was told to me or sold to me as this, you know, normative type of existing this is the way my parents did it and their parents did it and yeah did you grow up religious i did super religious actually um mega church baptist uh, oh okay. yeah so is really? that why you kind of decided is that what influenced you trying to live the heteronormative lifestyle very much so very much so like there was a lot of things going on at home at the time and so i faked a conversion to christianity and just to appease my parents and uh, getting married was part of that, and then uh, slowly the oh, wow. charade just fell away. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh man! Yeah. How hard is that? Uh, I mean, at the time, sure, but I'm grateful I went through it. Oh like, yeah, it absolutely. Right. Motivates almost everything I do now, especially with comedy and doing kink education and whatnot. I try to be the resource I never had growing up. Oh nice. Essentially, and I do that through the vehicle of comedy. Okay. Uh, congratulations. Well, thank you, <laughs> and thank you. For doing that, <laughs> yeah. hell yeah, good stuff. Do you have your like your own website or something like that where people? Instagram's can go the easiest way to follow me. Okay. Fet Life as well. Like I'm uh, Chris Wellman comedy on Instagram, but I'm Chris Wellman just raw dogging it with my real name on Fet Life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I think part of that too just goes back to what we were just talking about, like the need to not hide myself anymore. Right. Good. That's yeah. why we're doing this too to yeah. normalize this. Right. You yeah. Know? In every because. People shouldn't be losing jobs or families or oh, anything fuck no. like that, you know, just because they're kinky. Yeah, exactly. You know? So what happened when you decided to let off the brakes and... Uh, learned some lessons really fast. Uh, let's see. I didn't sleep with another man until I was 29. And then I went right from uh, a week later sleeping with my first dude to hooking up through internet magic with a triad of, yeah, other men. And so I was the fourth guy in the situation. I went real hard, real fast. Uh, Hell yeah. Right from the get-go. There you but go. But <laughs> confirming the fact that we highly believe that the gay community are like pioneers in ethical non-monogamy. Oh, for sure. Yes. Because they, it's like, they, it started there. Like, I don't know that it, I'm sure it originated before we had the, the term gay community. But <laughs> <laughs> right. The but, gays, as right. we used to call them. <laughs> the gays. The gays. <laughs> But the gays are so open to it. They're yeah. like, come on over. Let's try this out. Like, uh-huh. it's very... Why do you think that is? I mean, when you already live this existence of nothing is normative. I mean, even when right. it comes to sex, for example, it's uh, nothing is assumed. It's, uh, all right, we need to have a conversation. Who's going to be the top? Who's going to be the bottom? And I right. think mm-hmm. that li- living that t- uh, lifestyle and operating that way within life lends itself to questioning relationship statuses and relationship norms and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I think that was a huge, huge factor in why polyamory, ethical non-monogamy, et cetera, got its roots probably in queer culture. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Were you always um, interested in like other men? 
Oh, even, you know? Yeah, I feel like my attraction is just kind of all over the place. I do identify as well as demisexual. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So it's like I only want to fuck my favorite people is the <laughs> way I like to describe it. There's a very real friendship to relationship pipeline, I feel like, um, mm -hmm. at least in my experience. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I always noticed other men and was attracted and, uh, yeah, <laughs> it was so, always there. So did you come out to your parents prior to your 20s or like, no, did they know that? Or? No, 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 not at all. So that's actually a very interesting question because with my background, I came out to my ex-wife first and then I came out on stage second. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. So, so you came out to everybody before... Yeah. Anybody, almost. Yeah, I told her because it felt silly. You know, you're married to this person for so long. This is your best friend since high school. It right. feels very silly not to share this part about you. Mm -hmm. Right. And a, she didn't react well at all. Oh, that was, that was oh, man. Yeah. I'm sorry but that was about that. two years. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. But she was very vanilla. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. That's just, yeah. Her favorite position was starfish. So, yeah. <laughs> <I would say laughs> that. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yep. Yeah. Uh, no, no, you know better. <laughs> you know way I better. Know. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite position is origami. Yep, yep, I know. <laughs> How can we get that? Right. How can we get that? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, sorry, what we were talking about, ADHD ran away. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, we were talking oh. about the wife, so you oh, came out yes. to her. Came out to her two years before we got divorced. Mm -hmm. uh, came out on stage because I was already doing comedy at that point, um, and it felt like something I wanted to talk about on stage. And then didn't come out to my parents until after the divorce, actually. Oh, uh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So came out as queer and polyamorous uh, about two months after the divorce. Told them, like, hey, I've been this bisexual person this whole time. I also have a past with experimenting with polyamory and open relationships. That's kind of how I identify. They took it so bad that it took, like, six months of me saying the word polyamory uh, for them to even ask what the hell is polyamory. Oh, They're like, really? we're, we're just getting over the fact you're queer. What the else is this other oh, word? Oh, my God. Yep. Wow. Damn. But they accepted you and you've yeah, continued a relationship? It was uh, very rough coming out. Uh, I came out to them separately. The one I did come out to out at me to the other. And, oh. uh, yeah, one of those bad Bad stories. Oh, it, parents. You oh, gotta it, love them. Oh, right? It, God. <laughs> and it gets, it gets juicier. Came out as those two things. Kept the kink thing secret, especially because I had never been to a dungeon. Oh, Didn't start experimenting with kink and BDSM until a couple months of living in Denver, probably about six, seven months after my divorce. Went to my first slosh, went to a dungeon party. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So where, wow. Where did you come from, if you wouldn't mind me asking? I grew up a military brat, so I was okay. born in Indiana, but I, I've lived all over. I moved every three years pretty much okay. growing up. Okay. Uh, most of my time spent in Tampa. Oh, uh, nice. Up until, well, next year, uh, I'll be equal with Colorado and Tampa. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So you moved from Tampa to here? Yeah, back in 2015. I mean, I feel like Florida is sort of like open. <laughs> Kenji thinks you oh, moved the wrong way. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be going that way. <laughs> Especially now with this damn weather. I you know, know, right? But damn it. But yes, I thought, you know, like, Florida has, like, some open communities oh, and for like sure. stuff like that in around. Yeah, in Tampa, well, St. Pete, they have, like, FetCon and uh, one of the nightclubs my very vanilla ex-wife and I used to go to uh, down in Tampa was called The Castle. Oh. And we would show up accidentally sometimes, and it's like, we're doing a BDSM demo tonight. Like, what, so they're playing club music, and oh, people yeah. are getting flogged and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Her eyes just are like this. And I my, believe it. Yeah, she's terrified. My eyes are doing the exact same thing, but just because I'm like, oh, I'm home. How fucking <laughs> yeah. cool is this, right? My people. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. So she never wanted to experiment with anything. No. <laughs> anything. Oh, wow. No. No. <laughs> but wow. she would stay in the club that night and still dance? We would have, out? like, two drinks, and she's like, hey, I want to bounce somewhere else. It's making me uncomfortable. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We know some vanilla people who frequent in one of our clubs here in town mm -hmm. on one of those nights, their first night, and they were, she, they were like, what the fuck is going <laughs> on here? And we still talk about it. It's like three years ago, you know, and I'm just <laughs> like, really? Are you guys that traumatized that, you know? Right. Like, come on. 
It's only some Live fucking, a little. It's only some whips and some electricity shit and some <laughs> rope. Like, what the fuck? You know? So, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> There's not even naked people. What are you complaining about? Right? right? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't fulsome. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so you move up here. Yes. And this is where you, you experience all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, and man. about four months into me getting on my kink journey and uh, going out to sloshes, going to more events, going to classes and whatnot, I decided I wanted to – I heard the dungeon I started my first show at, Comedy and Kink, mm-hmm. uh, was looking for performers to do any kind of show, drag, burlesque, whatever. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, on a regular monthly basis. And so I threw my hat in the ring. I was like, I want to do – a kinky comedy show, uh, got the thumbs up. The owner was like, whatever you're thinking, make it weirder. And so I just started okay. that show. Yeah, and then just kept trying to right? push everything. And like, as f- I thought for sure this show might last two months. I'm either going to get arrested because the cops are going to break in. Like, you can't do this as a stage performance. You can't beat people up and stuff like that. That's how like, naive I was at yeah. the time. Uh, that or because it was on the tail of me too, I thought I'm for sure getting canceled. Like, oh, oh, oh yeah, I'm doing an openly kinky, sexy kind of show and stuff like that. Where, uh, yeah, comics are trying stuff out on me, and sometimes I'm trying stuff out on them. And I didn't want it to be like this perception of like you're hitting women. I'm like, no, I'm mostly the one getting beat up. It's actually <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and luckily. My fears like went away after it started doing well. It sold out. It got a lot of love, both from the comedy community and just audience members who came from not just the kink scene, but like the swinger scene. Yeah. And, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, awesome. Yeah. I know. God, we went to the bare naked one. Yes. <laughs> Hilarious. Oh, my God. Hilarious. <laughs> and I have to show. say, we're picky on comedy. Like, there's oh, been God. several yes. times that yes. I'm like, oh, that was a waste of our money. Oh, that fuck. was we walked... not your show. No. <laughs> yeah. We we walked out of fucking Eddie Griffin in, we did. in Las Vegas. Yeah, really? I know you know who yeah. Eddie Griffin is. Yeah. Yeah. It was on my birthday. And oh, we were like, out. we it were like, terrible. oh my God, this is going to be so fun. You know, he's been doing comedy forever. In the first, like, five minutes, he got up there and somebody in the front row was like, oh, hell no. Got up and walked out, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Did he just bomb? Yes. Like, yes. Like, yes. Like, yes. Made a dick so on stage. I, yes. We're literally in Damn. Vegas, and I'm like, I'm falling asleep during his show because it was so bad, and I'm like, Ugh. we got to get out of here. I know. The worst, <laughs> I'm literally gonna fall asleep. The worst part <laughs> is he got up and like, you know, 20 minutes into a set, he's like, "Hey, this this club gave me all the time I want, so." Get ready. We're going to be here for a couple hours tonight. And we both looked at each other like, oh, fuck. We can't even make it another 20 minutes. Are you serious? (laughs) Oh, man. So it was, yeah, we are definitely, definitely. like. And we weren't the only ones that left. No, we definitely like our comedy. There was a lot of people that left, unfortunately. I know. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's rough. I mean, you're never too experienced to to bomb like a bomb's coming right like yes as a comedian and so how does the bomb work when you're naked does oh luckily it oh. doesn't uh, like I, <laughs> I haven't bombed uh that show in particular one of the best things i love about it is how supportive and on board the audience is yes, yes. because that show it's like doing a show at an actual really good comedy club like comedy works here in denver yes for example. right like the basement room where it's all everyone's packed in and it's tight yes you feel that energy uh it's hard not to kill when you go up and you perform on that stage the right. audience is there to laugh mm-hmm. right and the naked show a hundred percent that vibe it is they, oh they'll gosh. laugh at nothing for the most part they just want you to do well that bad and they're just so excited to be naked themselves most of them right uh-huh. oh the my whole God. row was full of uh, is it like a, a group yes uh so you're the referring front. to the first two rows yes and <laughs> they've been the biggest fan of that show in particular so uh, love it Every single time for like the last two, maybe three years that I've been running that show, uh, the first two rows, they show up early. It's all older gay daddies. Um, 
they're nudists. They are naked immediately. And yep. Yep. My favorite is you can always see one or two twinks, like younger guys, yep. sprinkled yep. in there. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, I know what your kink is. <laughs> <laughs> you like them silver foxes. All right. Right. Oh, <laughs> they were sure. awesome supporters, though. They oh just God. love you. Oh, yeah. my God. You yeah. just tell. Just hearing everybody cheer. Yes. You know, it's just like, oh, God. Like and you it said, was it's got to be such a rush. It was yeah. such a great mix in the audience, too. There was a lot of swingers there was mm-hmm. a lot of just um polyamorous people mm-hmm. there was a lot of you know there was the the what do they call themselves again the daddies daddy oh yeah uh, the, yep <laughs> yep yep the silver fox the daddies silver fox daddies uh-huh. silver fox and shiny heads and right so, up front yeah, yeah it was just an awesome <laughs> mix of people old and young mm-hmm. some of them naked some of them not i i had on sexy lingerie i know <laughs> so it was a lot of fun <laughs> I had on nothing at nothing. one point. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely nothing. And you were shaking like a leaf. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was a little chilly, but that's also a normal thing. Uh, with uh, I have a body tremor. Oh, do yeah. you? Yeah, it's called essential tremors. Uh, I just shake all the time. Oh, I thought you were just cold. No. I was like, he's got to be freezing up there. <laughs> I know, because I was cold. <laughs> well, because we see you with the blanket <laughs> yes. at first. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, he's got to be but, cold. Uh-huh. Once I got under the stage lights, it felt very warm. Oh, nice. On the incubator of a stage and just warm right. it up that way. Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And I love how inclusive your com- comedians are as well. Oh, yeah. It was incredible. I mean, there was... It the was diversity, just, everything. Yes. <laughs> it was oh my just God. a great group. The gentleman that you read... His jokes. Oh, yes. Holy shit. <laughs> Shout out Cal Sheridan. Yes. <laughs> Cal Sheridan. Hell yeah. You are funny. <laughs> motherfucker. Oh, my gosh. He is so funny. He's so funny. I was kind of... He normally has a therapy dog with him. And so that's what I kept asking. I was like, where's the dog? The dog's already naked. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this is the show to bring the dog to. <laughs> right? <laughs> so funny. Oh, my goodness. So you went from the kink show to the naked show uh no actually so i went from the kink show to my slutty storytelling show okay and that uh ties back to what we were talking about earlier uh because comedy and kink started to have its success uh i eventually got a really nice write-up in westward magazine here in denver really oh, yeah nice. oh congratulations yeah they did like a full page and a half and like i Holy submitted shit. pictures and everything and nice. they interviewed me about the show um and then the day that article released, my parents found it online somehow. The day? Yeah. Were they the just like day. Googling Chris Wellman comedy or some shit? Right? Yeah, I think <laughs> someone <laughs> saw it on my social media because I blocked my parents at that point because oh. I'm releasing all these kink sh- like pictures and, whatnot yeah, and right. videos of me getting tied up and beat up on stage. So I didn't want them to see that. But anyway, someone else ratted me out. Showed it to them, uh, and their response was negative to say the least. And, oh God, again! Uh, of course, in a in a worse way, in a lot of ways. Yeah, uh, really. Yeah, and that was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back for me. I felt really, you know, dealing with a lot of internalized shame and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a long, drawn-out conversation with me and my dad, where there was a lot of yelling and whatnot. Bad, bad news. Felt all that shame and then remembered, oh, yeah, I have a dungeon date tonight. We're doing wax play on somebody. I'm not going to let my parents shame me off the horse. I go right. to, So I go to the dungeon, and then the dungeon owner, uh, Winnie, she has my article already printed out, like has like a little plaque for it and everything. Oh. And I explain what just happened a couple hours ago and right now and how sweet she was being. And she was just straight up told me, hey, they don't sound like good people. I've known you for almost a year now. I love you. I see you. If you need a new mom, I'll be your new mom. And so, wow. Yeah, shout out yeah. to Winnie, too. Yeah. That's Good awesome. for her. Oh, my God. I, and, you know, it's it just goes back to what we say about the community. It's like mm-hmm. just everybody's there for each other. Yeah. You know, and we can all, like, you know, oh, that might not work out with your family, you know, but we'll be your new family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You yes. Know? We accept you for who you are. That's one of the, like, I'm so lucky that I have not just this community through all these sexy weirdos that you and I know mm-hmm. and hang out with, but I also have that community through comedy because comedians right. are like some right. of my favorite people on the planet. They're the easiest people for me to be around. If I'm at a wedding or something, 
uh, just a regular boring wedding, and there's one other comedian I barely know there, we become best friends. Oh, this whole, of course. Uh, yeah, whole wedding just became about us making jokes and roasting and how dumb everything is. And, oh, yeah, that's like, awesome. We share that bond. It's just like, thank God I was surrounded by only normies. <laughs> right? Oh, man. Oh, you get to work on your stuff, too, with somebody else? You're like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> So, so I'm really lucky I have two communities like yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. So what kind of stories do you tell during the sexy storytelling? That reaction of talking to my parents, having that go bad, going no <laughs> contact with them, and then the embracing from Winnie. Um, I decided the next day, like, that feeling I felt, that shame and that guilt was the last thing I want anyone else ever to feel. Um, so I started my slut down show, started coming up with the idea where it's storytelling Comics share real life sex stories. Uh, a lot of oh, it can be embarrassing. Awesome. What I hope for is just hilarity more than anything. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, but start at that uh, as a middle finger, basically, to that shame and then that guilt that I Oh, was hell yeah. Yeah. Oh, capturing your power back. Yeah. Yes. yes. Immediately. Um, hell yeah. Yeah, and I started that in 2019 as well i want to say yeah 2019 oh my god nice. we have some fucking uh, funny stories that we could tell on a show <laughs> like that <laughs> what are you talking about i'm sure there's not <laughs> not even one not even right? one i don't even know what you're talking about right I now i love that i yeah. know so then what was the third show so third show after the slut down was the the naked show became its own regular show because I was doing it once a year for comedy and kink. I would okay. call it Naked November because I did a different theme every month, and I loved getting naked on stage so much that I just decided I have to do this more than once a year. And so yeah, and then same with the naughty show, my rope show. Okay, uh, also got started that way. Oh, oh wow! So yeah. that was like a segment of your regular kink. comedy and kink show, and that was the only time I would fuck with comedians while they were on stage. Because <laughs> oh. most of the recipe of comedy and kink is afterwards we all get on stage and a dom will teach you how to beat me up. Uh, and so I wanted the rope show to be its own thing and started that at Studio Friction. As oh, a result. okay, yeah. nice. And what do you do during the rope show? Oh, uh, uh, so with that show in particular. Like I said, it's the only show where I fuck with comedians while they're on stage. Uh, so there's a rope suspension happening on the stage right next to the comedian, and they have to perform side by side. So people are getting dangled from the ceiling and, yeah, like tied up. Sometimes tits are out and whatnot. And comedians, especially the vanilla ones who've never experienced anything like this, they'll sometimes clam up, forget every joke they've ever written, get all shy and bashful. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, yeah. And oh, that, my to God. Me, oh, like I said, I'm definitely got a sadistic side to me, and that's uh, just... Uh, right? That's hilarious. <laughs> I like making my friends sweat. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. They're getting on stage. You're just like, uh-huh. Oh, I see what's happening. <laughs> There's poke. tits six just, feet away. <laughs> I'm just going to poke a little bit. This is way more intense than the SNL auditions. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <laughs> and so that has become its own show at Studio Friction. Yes, the naughty show, K-N-O-T-T-Y. Yeah. And then that was number four, right? Yes. So what's the last one? Gay Brunch. Uh, oh. That's a show, me and my buddy Vince Smith, who's another comedian and producer here in town. Okay. Um, we started together. Uh, the whole concept is we want to take brunch back from straight people. Okay. Because <laughs> we feel like that's... <laughs> Cultural appropriation, like the gays started brunch, okay? I'm so sick of uh, getting invited to straight people's boring brunches where it's like, oh, there's a baby here, and no one is that hungover, let alone doing cocaine to solve their hangover right there now. You <laughs> there you go, right? And gay brunch used to be that back in the day. It was the, where you show up on Sunday hungover while people are still at church and you talk about what a whore you were over the weekend. And then right. you roast each other, you throw shade, you, you just sip mimosas and get some pancakes in you to kind of soak up the booze. <laughs> God, that sounds where so much fucking that at? fun. <laughs> <laughs> right? yeah. uh, I do that at Wide Right. So are you guys doing comedy during the brunch? Or? Yeah, the, the format of the show is all... It's basically like a late night show, except we have a brunch table on stage. And so me and Vince will both go up and do a set. Uh, and then we sit down together, we'll banter, 
and then a comedian does a set and then comes and joins us. Another comedian does a set, comes and joins us, and every time it's just a hang. Right. Like, it oh, feels like God. a podcast, honestly, because we're just oh, that's awesome. sitting there eating food and drinking while watching a comedian perform. And we're a little shitty to them. We throw some shade. Like, we're snapping fans and whatnot. <laughs> just a little bitch to... <laughs> oh, I love yeah. it. My God, dude. We have some comedy shows to go to. Yes, we Around do. town. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, now, do you run all five of these every month? The Naked Show is only every two to three months, usually. Okay, okay. I, do, I stretch that out because not every comedian's willing to get naked on I hear stage. You. In fact, I'd say about two-thirds of them, at least here in Denver, aren't. Okay. Uh, which is totally cool. Uh, but, yeah, so I got to kind of, like, spread those shows out. But then Gay Brunch happens twice a month, and the rest of them are monthly. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, Where nice. was Gay Brunch at? Wide right. Wide right. Same Wide place right. I right. Yeah, it's the same place I do my slut down show at. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever heard of that one. Well, you should no. come Wide by. Right. Yeah, we're definitely going. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Like we were talking about before the show, Denver has a thriving comedy scene. It mm-hmm. seems like there's underground clubs that are popping up everywhere. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, I know. At some like <laughs> rando places too, you know. I yeah. just did a show at a Kratom bar. Oh. What? Yeah. Okay. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Huh. I didn't know. And it was out in Lakewood. It's like out in the suburbs. What? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> a Kratom bar. Right. Yeah. Interesting. We've, I've never taken Kratom. How is it? Not bad. No? I mean, kind of gives it a little warm, buzzy feeling, but. Okay. Yeah. Not bad. Okay. Interesting. Huh. So what's your too. next move in, in comedy? I would like to do more stuff outside of Denver, in particular, okay. like take my shows on the road, because I can go to any city for the most part and pop up, because I know so many kinky people, and so I can go do the rope show at any other dungeon. Oh, and that'd then be cool. Oh, yeah. Reach out to comedians I know, because I book a lot of comics that are traveling out of town. Oh, like interesting. Coming through comics who have moved away, and so, yeah, I got connections all over. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Do you have one venue that you're really hoping that you can perform at? I mean, there's more so events, I would say, that okay. I'm hoping okay. to perform at. So, like, I'd love to do any of my shows at Skank Fest, which is a big thing that just happened this past weekend in Las Vegas. Skank Fest? Yeah, Skank Fest. Oh, my huh. God. Fet, what was the other one down in Florida? FetCon. FetCon. Okay. God, all these places we need to fucking go. What are we doing <laughs> here? Skank yeah. Fest is a comedy-specific festival. Oh, is it? It's, yeah. Uh, the main core of comedians who started it are out of New York City. Okay. Uh, I've been following them for years. But, yeah, that that's a dream gig I'd like to do. Um, I'd also like to do any of my shows at, like, some of the kinky big gigs like Folsom Street Fair. I would love to do Folsom. Oh, that would be nice. awesome. I, I feel like I'm perfect for it. Like, yeah. Let me in. <laughs> well, right? man, hopefully you're manifesting it here on the show right yes. now. <laughs> I know. I know, right? So how do you navigate that with your partners? How do your partners feel about you going on stage naked? And I mean, all my partners are in the scene, so... So it's pretty easy. They'll come sometimes and check out the show and get naked themselves uh yeah if anything it's more so the balance of uh my relationship anarchy and uh, having partners understand like comedy comes first this is the thing i've this is my kid so to speak this is the thing i care most about i care about our relationship but i have to go do comedy first okay so that's your first love Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. very much so nice well i'm glad that you have that channeled so that you can yeah. focus on it I gotta know. state that boundary <laughs> i know where do you see comedy going here in denver i mean i really love the scene um from what i can tell too a lot of our people who have our comics who have moved or just traveled including some of the new crop um are just crushing it all over uh there's lots of headliners that are based here in denver who have been in denver for years who are touring that i love and i'm huge just personal fans of and friends with uh but uh, for example, we're, Denver is connected to the Roast Battle League that happens nationally. So, yeah. The okay. Roast Battle yep. League. Yep. Okay. So it's uh, it's happening in 15 cities across the U.S. and I think two in Canada. Um, but there's an official Roast Battle League that's based out of the Roast Battle in L.A. Uh, and okay. we have our own chapter of that. And our winners have to go down to Austin to battle it out and every single person we've sent has won like nice yeah and most of those comedians are two and a half three years in 
Nice. Yeah. Oh wow. Hell yeah. Right yeah. on. Where do you find them? Like, do do you f- have a thriving online community that you? Oh, for sure. And then yeah, just like the kink community or the swinger and community, uh, you just meet people at places. So you see a lot right. of these comics over and over again at shows you're booked on. Uh, we'll trade shows and hey, will you do my show? I'd love to do your show and yeah. Oh yeah. So you form connections that way. It's a lot of networking at bars and breweries. And yeah. <laughs> oh right. Other places of degeneracy and <laughs> <laughs> swinger clubs. Yeah. Swing um, yeah. For, uh, yep. My favorite places. <laughs> oh, I know the Mon. It's you know it's that old school seventies. Shag know, carpet right? and all the decor. <laughs> like, oh gosh. Every time we go there, we're like, oh man. I <laughs> <laughs> love it. <laughs> yeah. Where do you usually frequent? Like when you go around doing, you know, not comedy. Not comedy? Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, are you asking more about. Like, like kink, like kink okay, stuff. Kink spaces? Like, you know, kink spaces, swinger spaces, yeah. you know. I typically uh, stick to dangerous, uh, or not, that's comedy mode. That's yeah. the comedy name. <laughs> <laughs> when we're open for non sinning, uh, <laughs> dangerous theater. Uh, yeah, the sanctuary. Uh, okay, I've been okay. there a lot. Uh, I also have a free membership, so that's nice. And then same with Studio Friction. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So, do you like doing Shibari yourself too? I like it done on me <laughs> okay i've not had a consistent partner who is interested enough for me to go to classes with other, like okay. a consistent partner that i could practice on and whatnot so i wrote bottom i don't rope top but okay yeah, yeah. uh it's just from not learning if it's something i'd like to learn and go mm-hmm. there's so much to learn i know he's got it's books galore yes i mean yeah you know and like i feel like these books just still don't do it justice Right. You know, it's like more like shit that you just have to get into. Yeah. And just do, you I know. Think tastings yep. are uh-huh. the best. Yeah. Cause I mean, I try to do, I'm like, and then it just, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't turn out like this picture. Yep. You know? <laughs> exactly. Plus, I also, like I said earlier, I shake like crazy. Uh, so, me with trying to tie stuff. I just, I also have. I uh, thought you were just cold. No. I literally just thought. Because the lady came on stage and she said, the the temperature is staying right here. We're not moving it. They're naked. (laughs) And and I was like, oh, well, maybe they're cold. And that's why they left the temperature. I definitely was. I know. (laughs) I was like, oh. You had clothes on. I I know. I (laughs) kept them on because it was cold. (laughs) Damn. Um, but yeah, so the shakes and the tying, nah, not my best. And then same with, uh, my ADHD, I get impatient and I don't want it to take oh, 30 minutes right there to get right there, get you restrained right so there with you. All, I have cuffs. Uh, I have chains. I have carabiners. I can do this. Click, 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 click. Well, we're done. We're so done. Like, huh? Honestly, already- it's not the tying, the act of tying me up mm-hmm. that I get impatient with it's the untying yes because usually by the time I'm ready to be out of it I am ready to be out of it done mm-hmm. yes yeah and I'm like it is irritating me somewhere or it's mm-hmm. too tight or I'm I just need it off and that I feel like takes the longest yeah when I'm like anxious and like get it off of me now uh, right <laughs> and rope is fucking expensive so right. we had to cut some and we I'm like have, damn it now I have to before. fucking you know, now I got to fucking Sandy. replace this shit. <laughs> God yeah. damn it. <laughs> got to get a new ro- rope. Got to yeah. treat it. Right. Uh, you know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So you said you're a switch. Yes. Uh, did you, um like, work on your dom side before? Or did you work on your sub side before? How did that come about? Uh, I was always a switch, I'd say. Okay. Um, yeah. I realized very early on uh, in my childhood, connecting the dots as an adult, uh, that there were some painful things that I really enjoyed. My first example was, uh, was uh, so as a little kid, getting shots and immunizations is terrifying. Get, get right. Correct. Uh, and I always used to cry. And I remember being like five and six, like trying to work up the courage. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. And then oh, it hurts again. And then one time it just clicked and I'm like, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. And then I got hit with the needle and I was like, oh, well, why does it feel good now? Oh, wow. Huh. I'm very into needles now as an adult. Play piercing is one of my favorite things really? to bottom for in kink. Yeah. It's not so much a sexual thing. It's mostly a body drug. 
getting high. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. Endorphins and whatnot. It just gets me the highest, the quickest. Uh, but that's interesting to look back on that, especially as a little kid, the whole car ride home, my mom's like, you did a good job. You didn't cry. And I'm like, yeah, but why did it feel good this time? Yeah. And her being vanilla church lady, she's like, no frame of reference. <laughs> oh, <laughs> interesting. That's how, and that's how fetishes are developed. Mm-hmm. Or is it how kinks are developed? It's one of the two. There's a difference. I think it's how kinks. Is it kinks come from childhood? I think so. I wouldn't say it's a kink necessarily. It's just mm-hmm. one of my favorite kink. Or yeah, I wouldn't say it's a fetish. It is a kink. For yeah, me, it's one of my favorite types of play. Do oh, you like? Awesome. Do you like the like hook play as well? I haven't done that yet, but I really want to. Oh man, we! I'm so excited. The, yeah. The uh, so it's rare that I get a bottom for it, but I have one person when he comes into town. He was actually an old mentor of mine. Uh, but when he comes into town, he and I will do needle play. And last time we played together, he tried to get in my head and fuck with me because he's like, I'm going to go set up in the dungeon. I'm like, okay, I'll be in there in a sec. And he has all his equipment out, and he set, like, flesh hooks out. And as soon as I walked up to the table, I'm like, are we doing flesh hooks today? And he goes, fuck, I was trying to scare you. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> He was so <laughs> mad that I was excited about it. And, it's like completely did, different he reaction. He still used him on you, right? No, he didn't use no. him on He was like, no. I had plans for these uh, for another scene I'm doing in a week, but oh. I was just using them to fuck with you. You're like, why didn't you Why you fucking break him out, asshole? Know, God right. damn it, you dick. Right? You oh. Tease. <laughs> tease. I know. Oh, man, we caught, we caught a live one. Uh, at uh, tracks, tracks at the kink, at the kink ball, and my wife automatically she was like, "What's going on over there?" I know. Let's go see that. Yeah, y- you know. And so to see that live, it was like, "Whoa, this is intense." Yep. Yeah. This is it. Yeah. It's one of the few like classes and on types of play that I feel like I haven't gone to yet is on flesh hooks in particular and hook suspensions and hook pulls. Uh, I'm very eager. The next intensive they have here. Yeah. The next time it's in. Yeah. Oh wow! I where really do you go. where do you get all this like uh, all the education at all these classes just around town? Yeah, here sanctuary. In, yeah, hundred percent. It's sanctuary. always been in town. Uh, like sanctuary, Colorado Cal. Uh, oh yeah, 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 absolutely. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm so grateful they started classes back up. There used to be a, a organization called T- Talk Sexy. Uh, here, I want to say they existed about four years ago, five okay. years ago. Okay. Okay. Um, and they were great. One of my favorite and funniest classes I've ever been to was a talk sexy class at Studio Friction. Really? Okay. Yeah. It oh, was a uh, nice. It was on squirting. <laughs> uh, it, it was uh, yeah, a very normal class. You have the powerpoints and the whatnot, and then they did a live demo at the end, followed by a Q and A. And so the demo bottom, she orgasmed, then squirted. Um, Q and A opens up. Everyone asks a bunch of questions. Right. Of course. Like, of course. Everyone's curious. Uh, but the very last question that got asked, uh, some poor woman just raised her hand and she asked, she was like, okay, I want to clarify. You said you had an orgasm and then you could tell you were about to squirt as soon as your orgasm was about finished. And then you did squirt. How could you tell? And she started to answer about, well, when you've squirted enough, you kind of can tell it's about to happen, you know, Mm -hmm. whatnot. And she raises her hand back up. She's like, no, no, no. How can you tell you had an orgasm? Oh, oh, oh my wow. gosh! So I am, I am I sitting in the back row. It all as I see, it looked like the pastor asked everyone to bow their heads and pray, because everyone just went, "Oh no, oh no, so I know, so oh, I know, I know." But it's a, it's, it's a so, story that we hear. All the time, though. I know. There's women that I've met that didn't have their first orgasm until they were in their 50s. Right, right. I'm just, uh, the part I was amazed by was my ability to not laugh at that point <laughs> because I'm the one watching oh everyone have the same reaction. Like, we right. are all thinking this, but it was just, you saw everyone, like, look right. away. And, I, uh, I definitely thought the comedian was coming out there. Uh, like, uh, oh, uh, don't uh, laugh now. <laughs> don't laugh now. <laughs> Bite that hand. <laughs> You can't laugh. That's just going to embarrass her more. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Right? That's heartbreaking. So I know. So luckily the instructor, he was very nice and gracious and came up with a very tactful response of, well, I suggest you stick around for the hands-on portion we're having upstairs. And yep. there's, we can probably help you with that. Right? Oh, wow. Yep. Oh, wow. Hey. I hope she got th- – here's to her orgasm that day. Oh, I know. I hope she got it. <laughs> right? I hear you on that one. Because <laughs> – 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So that was definitely one of the funniest classes I've ever been to. Also, very informative. Learned some good squirting techniques. Yeah. On awesome. top of having that giggle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Kenji could probably teach that class. Oh, I know. Yeah, I mean, you know. I just want to go to a lot of these classes. I that's, know. That's they're why just I, fun. It's just that's, fun to I'm learn. Like, yeah. You yeah. always pick up something different from – and there's different techniques. Or like off air last night, we were uh, we had a different guest on, and we were talking about all the – she's like, I, I only knew that you could – at first I didn't think that everybody could squirt. Then once I learned that you could squirt, I thought there was only one way to do it. Yeah. And then I found another way, and then I found another <laughs> way, and I then know. I found another way. <laughs> I know. I'm like, we were all counting. I said, oh, man, I think my wife can do it like five or six times. I know. Mm-hmm. Five or six mm-hmm. different, different ways. ways. <laughs> different ways, you know. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chris, we really appreciate you coming on tonight, Absolutely. man. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, I we know. appreciate you sharing your story with us and, and talking about your 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 road to get to where you are because it sounds like you are very much in love with the person that you are at this time very much so and thank you for having me like this has been a blast for Absolutely. sure oh yeah. yeah so tell the tell everybody where they can find you and when your next shows when your are. next shows are but yeah you can check me out online at chris wellman on everything including vet life uh, at chris wellman comedy on instagram and then, as well, my comedy shows, you can check out Comedy and Kink, First Fridays, Denver Sanctuary, slash Denver's Dangerous Theater, uh, First Fridays. And then Second Fridays, you can check out, as well at Dangerous Theater, you can check out Bear, my naked show. Come get naked with us. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. And then Third Fridays, The Naughty Show, that's K-N-O-T-T-Y, Naughty. It's a rope pun. Uh, but that's The Rope Show, Studio Friction, Third Fridays, Fourth Fridays, Slut Down. At Wide Right, and then Gay Brunch first and third Saturdays at Wide Right as well. Oh hell yeah! Awesome. Thank you very much, sir. We Chris. appreciate you. We do. Otherwise. If you guys want more of Chris, then check out his Fafa, and then you have a Fafa ready for us. Right, oh yes. Chris? Okay, oh perfect. yes. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll see you next time. Bye guys. Bye ages.